What a play as a tour boss tay up in this mug, and today we're going to paint up a trooper from Wissenland. W I S S E N L A N D. And it's one of the provinces of the Empire, so we're going to talk a little bit today, do it a little combined episode of a Fluff Hunters and tutorial. And let's get started. So, Morn Fang Brown, these are in no particular order. Bugman's Glow. Steel Legion Drab, these are just the paints that I know I used. Rakarth Flesh. Raikland Flesh Shade. Abadabadabadabudaba. Agrax Earth Shade. Mechanicum Standard Gray. Or Mechanicus Cadian Flesh Tone. XV88. Mephiston Red. <laughs> Dryad Bark. Drew Kai Violet. And that's it. Oh, Celestia Gray is the other one. Okay, so as we get started, the first thing that I did was prime my model, and I always prime with Duplicolor Sealable Primer, flat gray, and it's a fantastic primer. I haven't been able to find it since I moved away from Hawaii up to California, but I'm still looking for it. It's, for, you know, bang for your buck, it's one of the best primers that I've used. It's, uh, it gives you this dark, flat, gray surface to work on, and it's just, it's perfect for plastic models. So I'm going on with the Bugman's Glow here, and uh, I think I thinned it down a little bit too much. You can tell if you thin your paints down too much because when you paint it on the model, it looks a little streaky. The uh, color underneath, in this case the primer, is visible through the paint. So when that happens, the best thing to do is just give it a little bit of drying time and then go back over it. And uh, if, if I were to just keep adding paint on and slapping that paint on, then all the, the detail would get obscured. So I give it a little bit of time and just go over the parts that look like it was a little bit too thin. And uh, okay, so let's go, let's talk about uh, uh, Wissenland while I'm painting. I'm reading this part from the Uniforms and Heraldry for the Empire book. This is a product that Games Workshop sells and it's pretty good because it gives you a bunch of color palettes and uh, shows you examples of the, the banners and the shield iconography and it's okay except that it doesn't really show you any practical like how to paint guides and when you consider the fact that most of the banners in like the state troopers and the crossbows slash handgunners box kits are like folded in on itself it's kind of hard to replicate. Okay, Mechanicus Standard Gray. The the county of Wissenland, or is it what is it? The Grand Yeah, the Grand County of Wissenland is its is its official name. Their colors are gray and white. And uh, because of that, since I'm already working off of a gray base coat, I've decided to go in two directions. The darker gray is gonna be Mechanicus Standard Gray, and the lighter is gonna be Celestric Gray. And both of those we're gonna build up, but yeah, we're just laying down the base coats now, and as you can see, I'm going in quarters again. The uh, good thing about the Wissenland troops, which I kind of wish that, uh, about halfway through, I kind of wish I'd done like a state trooper or a great swordsman, is that gray and white is so plain and simple, but the way they accent it is that in their slashed uniforms, where they have slashed sleeves and different areas to do uh, color, color sp spots, they will choose a bright color to offset the drabness of the gray and the white. So I've seen, I'm looking at examples right now where some of the slash sleeves are gray on the outside, but then a bright vibrant red underneath, or in some of these uh, swordsmen, their, their pants are dark gray, their high stock stockings are, are light gray, and their, their, their tunic is light gray, but then underneath the tunic is, is a rich red. Yeah, so when we read about Wissenland, I don't know if that's even the correct way of pronouncing it. I, I know it's supposed to be based off of, I think, like a German pronunciation. So the W is changed into a V, but I'm, I'm not too sure of the correct pronunciation. So if any of you have the uh, correct way of pronouncing it, I, I'd ask the Emperor Karl Franz, but he's still uh, battling to save the Empire from all the horribleness of the end times, so he's not here to tell me, but if any of you know how to pronounce 
this province, that would be awesome. Okay, the southernmost of all the empire's provinces, we'll just say Vissenland for now. Vissenland has incorporated the former territory of Saland. Now we're going to Mornfang Brown for some of the brown leathers and the shoes and stuff. Okay, so Saland collapsed in the year 1707. And uh, it was a, a province that was just kind of like all of these other provinces. And um, uh, that might be a fun tutorial to do, like the Lost County of Saland. Just like I'm doing a pre-vampire counts as well. But uh, since Saland collapsed, Vissenland had incorporated it. The colors of Vissenland are gray and white, with many state regiments distinguishing themselves with differently colored plumes, ribbons, or shield designs. The state banner is a white lion carrying a pennant with a sun, which is a nod to the heritage of Salin. Salin's iconography was the sun, although there are some nobles who dispute this and maintain the older design with the twin-tailed comet on the lion's banner. The gray that I'm using to paint, or not gray, but the, the brown, I decided to go with Mornfang brown. You can use, like I said, any of the browns, the leathers, the cloth, the straps. It's all entertain interchangeable, depending on what look you want to go for. I decided that because the dark gray and the light gray are so kind of washed out and drab looking, that I would, especially because when I, when I looked at it, this guy has an older man kind of face. He's bald, he's got long, scraggly hair. So his hair is going to be gray as well. I needed some color to offset that. So when I chose the brown for his, his, his leather armor, I decided to go with Mornfang Brown because it's a very deep, rich brown. Mephiston Red is the, the color we're going to use, and I actually chose red because in the Uniforms and Heraldry book, there's regiments of renown, and at the end of each province chapter segment, it will sometimes talk about a regiment that has distinguished itself that's from each of the provinces. That way, if you want to build them up and paint them and say, okay, this is the that world-famous unit, called whatever, then you have kind of like a color guide to go for. And these guys are marksmen, which is why I'm painting up a crossbowman, and they are called the Stern Tower Marksmen. And there's some pretty cool artwork, I wish I could show it but I don't want to get in trouble, um, of a bunch of crossbowmen that are kind of gathered around the map, and they're all wearing the Whistlin' colors, and then there's like a, one of the guys at the top, is I guess he's like supposed to be on the lookout and he sees something and he's pointing and he's grabbing the guy next to him and all of them the rest of them are trying to look at this map and it's just really cool cool artwork so one of the uh, one of the other great reasons to pick up this book the uniforms and heraldry of the empire so let's read about these guys this guy serves with the stern tower marksmen they're a newly formed regiment out of steingart they are garrisoned as part of the line of sentry posts and signal towers that guard the low foothills of eastern Vissenland. And uh, as you can see, I think I just showed that I'm going to be going with Rackhart Flesh now. The Rackhart Flesh is going to be for all of the little pennants as well as base coats for the skull. So any of the little uh, parchment pennants are going to be painted in this Rackhart Flesh color. Okay, so the Stern Tower Marksmen are uh, Garrison is part of the line of sentry posts and signal towers that guard the low foothills of eastern Vissenland, which lies under the shadow of the Black Mountains. Dryad Bark is the color that I'm going to use for the ammo pouch as well as the shoes. Always at the ready to launch signal flares to signify invasion, the watchtowers are essential for border defense. The region is rife with green skins and monsters, and recently packs of trolls have taken to wandering down in search of prey. The marksmen share the stern tower with several other regiments, halberdiers, and spearmen, which, with whom they have established a frontline camaraderie. Sergeant at Arms Hans Schwarblut is the tower officer, in command of the stern tower marksmen and a unit each of halberdiers and spearmen. He is a veteran of many battles against the marauding orcs, and his tight discipline keeps all the troops at high alert. Unwilling to sit and wait, Schwarzblut often orders patrols up into the narrow mountain passes. Okay, now we're going with Steel Legion Drab to paint up the wood uh, front bar of the crossbow. I think that's pretty interesting. It gives you options for, like if you wanted to do, if you're making a, an army list, say, an Empire army list, and you know you wanted to do a big chunky block of, of crossbowmen or uh, even handgunners, you can say, I want to paint them up in the colors of Vissenland, gray and white, seems like an awesome color scheme to me. 
<laughs> if you get a gray primer, and you prime your models like I do in gray, then all you really have to paint if you want to take the easy route is like the lighter white parts. Half your work and your uniform's already done for you. Okay, XV88 is going to be the color of the rope, just to give a little flash of a, a mustardy kind of yellow. And uh, like I was saying, if you want to have a, a nice big chunky block of crossbowmen, and uh, you also know you want to do some state troopers, like the, the book said, halberdiers and spearmen are garrisoned at the stern tower as well. So that, that's an interesting way to go about it. I know a lot of us out there, uh, moving back onto Rack Red Flesh, we see like a army list, an army list online, and we think, oh, this is awesome. Okay, what does this list consist of? A big chunky blocks of state troopers and crossbowmen. Okay, cool, I'll build them up. And somebody says, oh, you're gonna play Empire? That's cool. Do uh, How are you gonna paint it? What are you gonna do? And a lot of times like, I, I don't know. I just wanna play the game. I wanna have a a big unit of uh, foot infantry. You know, if you need the inspiration, um, I would say go for it. Always have backstories for your troops, especially if you're doing humans, because humans generally in Warhammer Fantasy and 40k are the weaker armies that rely on numbers, volume of fire, volume of bodies to to prevail, and a bunch of mixed unit tactics. So. I mean, find the fiction for your guys. Use whatever whatever you can. And then I think having that little bit of backstory is really going to help you in the long run. Uh, it'll be inspiring for you. You'll be, you'll be inspired when you're painting them. And you won't just think that you're, you know, trudging through a painting session. But you could say that uh, th this, un this guy that I'm painting up, he was like one of the older, saltier guys that really rely on the crossbow and people don't really pay attention to him and they dispute him because he's so old but um, he was one of the first Stern Tower marksmen and uh, most of the people who founded who were in the founding unit are all dead except him so you can come up with some interesting backstory I painted on some lead belcher uh, it's gonna need to have some lead belcher because there's you know there's some metal bits silver bits so uh, sorry, it's a little bit out of focus now. Try not to strain your eyes looking. But uh, now we're going on to, to crossbowmen, uh, painting the crossbow with Mephiston Red. So because red is such a vibrant spot color, and it's taking up such a prominent part of the model, uh, I think if I were to do a Stein Stern Tower uh, force, I would probably want to have matching blocks of detachments of spearmen and halberdiers maybe doing their poles in a bright red Mephiston color. I think that would be a really cool way to tie in all of these units. Especially because the uniforms are such a bland mix of gray and white. Okay, Carrick Stone is going to be our first highlight color which we're going to paint directly onto the parchment. And usually I go base coat washes highlights and I just decided to add this little layer up. Originally I would have liked to paint the the parchment in Carrick Stone but Carrick Stone is a little bit thin as a color and so it would have a lot of that spreading effect that we don't really want. Alright Mechanicus Standard Gray we're just continuing to clean up and uh, just smooth out all these areas where the color transitions into each other into the next one and Mechanicus Standard Gray is also going to be what we're going to paint this guy's hair in. I don't know but I'm... <laughs> my, my lady boss and I were watching Game of Thrones. We're totally binging on it. I have read the books a couple years ago and uh, I was so into it and then when they came out with the series I haven't watched it at all. I haven't watched any Game of Thrones. I'm serious and I don't know why because I love the book so much. And uh, Abaddon Black now is going to be for the the, I think the crossbow wire but we started watching it and I'm just totally in love with the series I think it's fantastic and um, I, I usually shy away from things that that take the book and kind of redo some of the stuff or you know turning a book into a movie or turning a book into a TV show especially when you really really love the book but yeah good job HBO and uh, we just got to the Red Wedding scene with that Walder Frey character and oh so good the lady boss and I it's funny because I read the books like a couple years back and I totally forgot about this huge life-changing story-altering thing 
until we were watching it, and then I was like, oh, wait. Oh. Oh. And then I was sad. <laughs> Katie and Fleshstone now is to highlight the hands and the face. Um, but the reason why I, I, I told that story was because this guy kind of reminds me of Walder Frey, the old scraggly-haired old man who's the boss of uh, the, the head of the house that uh, have hold the bridge. And so it's because his, he's bald up top and he's got that long scraggly hair and he's got that that sour expression and that's just so Walder Frey. What's funny is that I remember in the first edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, the big campaign, and uh, Ringo, if you're watching this, you might remember this, the Enemy Within campaign, uh, there was there were like no orcs, there was no big bad chaos warriors. The uh, One of the main conflicts in that story was the province that the, the player characters are adventuring in is at war with another province and I don't remember if it was like Raiklin and Wissenland or Talabeklin but um, yeah it was just humans on uh, humans versus humans for 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 land disputes and uh, land ownership rights and stuff so there was like the crown prince Hals von Tassenek was like making a force to go attack another province and so the PCs at the beginning are going to join this this uh, this army, uh, they're gonna sell their swords as mercenaries and fight with the the prince's army, and um, and then they miss they miss it. They they're like a day late because they have to stop at the very beginning, and some some stuff happens to them. So they totally the, the reason why they're together and adventuring together at the very beginning when something happens, this catalyst that ties them together, they they miss the reason why they're going to adventure in the first place. I'm totally off topic now, and I'm so sorry. Rackarth Flesh. Uh, I sometimes start rambling in these videos. Now that I'm... Sometimes I like to paint and the table is big enough now that I've moved uh, to the other garage. And uh, we've got this large like luau style table. And so sometimes a lady boss sits next to me. Sometimes we're talking while I'm painting. And um, Rackarth Flesh now for teeth. Simply uh, to do teeth, before I get back to my story, I, I just take most of the paint off my brush so I have only a little bit at the tip and then I drag a horizontal line across the mouth and you're going to get some in the lips, you might mess some of the, the color up, that's okay because when you get to the washes right here, it ties it all together and we're going to go with Agrax Earthshade for our first wash. So sometimes I'm sitting down now and I'm painting and the lady boss will come in and she'll bring me a cup of coffee and we'll talk and we'll gossip and. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about like Game of Thrones or what we want to do the next day or you know how, how things are going and uh, she's really into Kingdom Death now also so she's she can't wait to start painting them and so we talk about that and uh, my, my new just newly opened commissioned painting studio and everything and so uh, that's why I don't narrate these live anymore also because it, it helps me when I can see the video afterwards it takes twice as long because you know I'm filming and then I have to actually watch all these clips and narrate them but I enjoy them because I, I don't miss anything I don't I'm less likely to trail off into silence because I'm focusing on getting getting a paint right or looking at at the model correctly and holding it in focus so Yeah, I think as I'm, as I'm painting this Agrax Earth Shade on, I, I chose a pretty poor brush to do this. This looks like the brush that I used for my uh, adding AK Interactive mud effects. And uh, it was just the first one that I grabbed that looked like it was big enough for a wash brush. Again, you're using Agrax Earth Shade over the entire model. Uh, Nick Idikbeer said that when washing red, you could do a brown wash and then a red wash. And then what it's going to really do is uh, bump up that red color. The brown darkens the, the shadowy areas and then the red really enhances the red color. I couldn't find my Caraberg Crimson though, but if, if you want to do Caraberg Crimson on the red, then definitely do that. Raikland Flesh Shade is the color we're going to use to uh, shade the hands and the head. Okay, so very simple, just painting the shade 
into the hands, getting it between the fingers and where the wrist meets the sleeve. Now starting at the top of the head, working our way down, we just don't want to leave any unsightly puddles. So make sure when you're painting on your shades that you've got your brush nearby to pull the shades out from creating any big splotches of color and ink that you don't want. For those of you who know a little bit about the, the fluff and the geography, uh, inside Wissenland, the capital of Wissenland is Nuln, and that's where they have the uh, engineering school with all the artillery and uh, stuff like that. So you could create a pretty, if, if you like using artillery and cannons and stuff, you could do a like Wissenland, purely Wissenland army with lots of artillery and all of these uh, other kinds of troops. Drukai Violet is the color that we're going to use to kind of paint in and around the bruise. We'll do more work with that when, when the shades dry. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Laters!